Hey guys, Malcolm here with Survival Know How, and today we're taking a look at Battle Box Mission Number 11. So this box is focused on a subject which I think is one of the most overlooked subjects when it comes to prepping and survival. Right? When people get into prepping and survival, first thing they go for is knives, right? And then maybe they'll go for like guns and ammunition. Maybe, you know, if they're, they're smart enough, they'll eventually move over to um, buying like camping gear and some food rations, right? Some freeze-dried food. But that's that's where a lot of people stop. And a lot of people overlook two main subjects, and that is one is water, and the other one is first aid. And this box is taking care of first aid for you, right? This box is all about first aid and being ready to handle many medical medical issues. So I'm really happy that Battle Box is not overlooking first aid. In fact, they're dedicating an entire box to first aid, which is great. Thumbs up to you guys. So one more quick thing before we jump in. This box will help you get all the items that you may need to help with 90% of the ailments, right? Uh, but this is just the items, right? Uh, it, this box even has some knowledge, it has some books and some uh, things to help you along, but you really need to get some training, okay? Um, having the equipment, having a book, you know, on your shelf, you know, that's good, but it's not great. It's really not enough. You really need some hands-on training. At a minimum, everybody out there should get CPR certified, right? It's a one-day course. It's really quick and easy. Uh, I'm in the Air Force. I have to do it every couple years. Um, I've also gotten some other really great training, some pre-deployment training, where we actually give each other IVs, and we uh, practice tourniquets and splints, and, um, all, you know, all these different scenarios that we have to work with. So I'm pretty confident uh, in my, my abilities when it comes to first aid. Uh, but there's a lot of civilian training out there that you guys can go and actually sign up for. And it's just, you know, one day, two day, three day course or something. We actually get hands-on training. All right, rant is over. Let's jump in and see what we got this month. So as always, we're gonna start with the basic box. And the first item you get is a small Molly med pouch. All right, this is bright red so you don't get it confused with everything else. Uh, as you can see, it's got the Molly straps here. Got the molly straps on the front so you can attach a few things to it. Um, and you open it up and it's just got some great organizational pouches here. Uh, you know, you can stick different tools in here, uh, some little basic first aid kit stuff. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, I like those bright red so you don't get this confused with anything else, right? Uh, you need first aid, you go for the bright red. Very cool. So next up, we have the Ready Man Medical Card. So this is pretty interesting, right? We've seen Ready Man before. I've got uh, their survival kit, their lock picking kit, their um, like a little camp stove kit, uh, a kit for cleaning your AR-15 uh, bolt carrier. I didn't actually know that they made a medical kit. This is pretty interesting. I, you know, I'm a little weary. They might be kind of stretching this concept a little thin of having a pocket size thing, but uh, I mean, I can see that they have several needles here, right? Uh, they've got some curved needles. They've even got some really extreme curved needles. But uh, oh, it looks like it's got some tweezers here. So you take this out and you can fold them in half. Yeah, again, I'm really, I mean, I see like a little saw thing here. I don't know how handy that's gonna be. This looks like it's a file, like you might use on your nails. I'm not really sure what to use that for. I'm really not sure what these guys are either. Out of all the Ready Man cards that we have, I'd say I'm probably the least excited about this one, right? Their survival kit is very cool. Um, their lock picking kit is very cool. Those are two things I would love to have in my wallet at all times. You know, the aspect of having some sewing needles and some tweezers like this in your wallet, carrying around part of your EDC, I'm not really convinced that that would be um, that much of a value, but still pretty neat. It might be fun to play with. And that is the Ready Man uh, medical card. So next up we have the four inch Israeli band trauma dressing. All right, so that's this guy. It's in this little airtight uh, wrapper. So I've seen these before. We use these in the military. Um, there is a four inch wide band. Let's say you have a big gash here. You wrap it around in one direction and then it has kind of a, a plastic clip. You clip it through that and then you pull it really tight and you start wrapping it around in the other direction, all right? So that's going to put a lot of pressure on that, um, on your cut or what, your wound or whatever, and that'll help stop the bleeding, all right? So it's kind of neat because the unique feature is that you wrap it one direction and then you can pull it in the other direction to really put a lot of pressure on there. 
And again, you know, this is kind of thing where I'm talking about where you really need the experience. If somebody would just pull this out, um, it, it's a little confusing at first, I'll be honest, trying to figure out how to use that little uh, plastic strap. So this is the kind of thing you really need to practice with uh, and get some experience, you know, wrapping bandages like that and using items like this. But very cool. This is definitely a great thing to have and a great addition to any first aid kit. So four inch Israeli bandage trauma dressing. All right, so next up we have the pocket first aid field guide. All right, so I love field guides. I love pocket editions of books, right? Um, if you have a great big book, it's gonna sit on your shelf. It's not gonna do you any good out in the field. I love something that you can bring along with you camping, you can throw in your, your truck or something. So uh, this is great, you know, this is great to have this kind of knowledge. It talks about, you know, it talks about all the basic, you, you know what it talks about. And some good stuff in here. Um, and I, I love compact books, having this knowledge at your fingertips. Uh, you know, you might argue, well, I got my cell phone, I got all my knowledge in there, I got an app on there, but man, you can't rely on that stuff. Batteries die very easily, especially if you're out camping and in the wilderness. Um, having a field guide like this, a pocket edition, uh, this is what you need, guys. You're, you're much more likely to actually bring this along with you than you are if you have some big medical book. So, uh, I like it, great, I'm gonna bring this camping with me next time I go. So last up in the basic box is this big guy, all right? This is a first aid kit uh, with 62 piece first aid kit, right? Great, great thing to have. It says ideal for your car, ideal for your boat. Uh, how many of you guys have a first aid kit in your car right now? I'm willing to bet like 5% of you do, right? Uh, I, I absolutely do. Uh, you know, I've got a whole car kit. I got jumper cables and everything. I make sure my wife has all that stuff in her car as well. So this is great. If you guys don't have a first aid kit in your car, get this box, get this, stick it in your car right now. Um, if you don't feel like spending the money on buying a complete kit like this, you can actually go to Dollar General and you can make a really great first aid kit just from items that you buy in Dollar General, right? Most of these items are very basic and very, very cheap, right? Um, what do we got? We got surgical pads, 16 bandage strips, an ice pack, one tweezers, one scissors, eye wash, eye pad, triangle of bandage, so on, safety pins, latex gloves. You can buy all that stuff at Dollar General, a dollar a piece, right? You go in there and you spend $15, $20, you can pretty much get all these items in here, right? And then you just need to have a nice plastic case like this. Um, so first aid kits are pretty cheap, guys, but great thing to have. If you don't have this in your car, go out to the Dollar General this weekend. Go build a basic kit, man. You can go online and see what all the items are that are inside this kit. Get almost all of them at uh, Dollar General. All right, so that does it for the basic box. So to recap, we got this big first aid kit. We've got the first aid field guide, right? Knowledge is power. Having the equipment is great. You also need the knowledge. Now all you need is the experience. You need to practice with it. You've got the Israeli bandage, right? This is what I was telling you about. It goes in one direction, has the plastic clip. You can pull it in the other direction and get it really nice and tight on those wounds. You have the Ready Man first aid card. I'm not that excited about this. Uh, and then you have the um, Molly first aid pouch. So when you guys go to build your own first aid kit from Dollar General, this is the perfect place to keep it. Uh, it's bright red, so when you need first aid, bam, that red pouch right there, right? If somebody else, if you had to tell somebody else, hey, go get my first aid kit, just say, bam, red pouch, go, right? You don't have to explain to them, oh, it's in the bag, it's underneath of this. Just get the fucking red pouch, get back here, bam. So this is the, uh, the basic box, and I'm really excited that this is all you really need this month, right? The rest of the stuff is, you know, it's, it's great, but this is the basic, and this is like the essentials of what you need, right? You got your gear and you got your knowledge, so I'm really glad that they included a nice rounded first aid uh, kit in the basic box. All right, so moving on to the advanced box, the first item we have is the surgical tool set with sutures. Now this really is getting into the advanced territory here, right? Um, I was telling you, I've had a lot of training. Um, I, I could probably do some basic stuff, man. I could probably sew somebody up if I had to, but that, that's about it. This is pretty, pretty hardcore, wow. So this has got all kinds of uh, pretty advanced medical gear here. So this looks like it's really a kit for more long-term sustainability. If shit really hits the fan and we don't have to bug out to our bug out locations, 
this is the kind of thing that you want to be want to have uh, just in case, right? This is for uh, real medical emergencies where you are no shit uh, all by yourself and you you don't have an ambulance uh, that you can call. You don't have a hospital you can go to. You know, you have to take care of yourself. So let's just run through here. We have two straight hemostats, all right? So I'm guessing that is these guys. So these are not scissors. These are actually like clamps. So imagine if you had to go in and clamp down on somebody's artery, right? This is what you'd probably use and they lock in place. They got several different locking positions. So we have two straight ones of these. We have one curved hemostat. We have one pair of scissors. We have one pair of tweezers. Wow, this is some, uh, some serious tweezers here. We have one number three scalpel handle. So this is interesting. Uh, this is just the handle and it looks like there's a groove here where you can actually insert different scalpel blades. That's, that's pretty interesting. Two scalpel blades. I'm guessing that is these guys. Yeah, you can kind of see the outline of them there. This is it says sterile surgical blade. So I'm glad to see that these are sterile. I was actually a little concerned that these aren't um, like packaged better to keep them sterile, but I guess, you know, if you're really using these, you have to sterilize these yourselves. Um, luckily these two blades at least come uh, packaged and already sterilized. One holder, I'm guessing that's this guy. One suture set. I'm really not sure what that is. Uh, I'll come back to that one. One needle probe. I'm guessing that's this guy. Two alcohol wipes. Two BZK antiseptic towelette wipes. One pen light. Kind of funny. It's a, it's just a pen. Uh, and it has a flashlight in the end. It says Elite First Aid Inc. EliteFirstAidInc.com. And then, I don't know. We got a silk braided bandage. We got these two guys. I'm really not sure what these are. So like I said, this is really pretty advanced stuff here. Um, this is like for major surgery. Um, this isn't something you would keep in your car. This isn't something you see an accident on the side of the road and you gotta pull over and perform surgery. This is for like long-term bugging out. So next up in the advanced kit, we have the rats tourniquet. So this is a, I not actually seen this design before. This is pretty interesting. Uh, it looks like a great tourniquet though. So in case you guys aren't familiar with uh, first aid, the concept of a tourniquet is that you have four arteries, main arteries that run down each limb, right? One artery that runs down each limb. Let's say I sever my arm, completely cut off my hand here. That artery comes from your heart, it's gonna be spewing out blood. So a tourniquet puts pressure on the artery and stops the blood flow from going down there any further. Now let's say I, I didn't, let's say I just slit my wrist real bad, right? Uh, you can put a tourniquet on. I think it's you have about two hours to get to a hospital to take that tourniquet off. Uh, anything past that two hours, then your hand is just, the rest of your hand is gonna be dead. Uh, it didn't get blood flow for that long, and they're gonna have to amputate wherever that tourniquet uh, is put on. Now, where it actually placed a tourniquet, it, it's, I, I've heard different things. The easiest spot to get to your arteries are right uh, for your arms is up here. For your legs, it's right in your groin spot. Now, when I was in the Boy Scouts, they trained us, right? You put an artery on up here. In the military, they train you to put a tourniquet on two inches above the wound. Sorry, I got distracted. Back to this is the rat's tourniquet. So it looks like this comes with a loop already uh, kind of designed into this product. You wrap this around your arm and you feed the remaining band through the loop like this. Oh yeah, man, that's already getting tight. So this is uh, it's like kind of a, an elastic band, right? It looks like you wrap this around several times. And then eventually you can feed this through one of these little metal clamps here. Just like that. Yeah, that's, that's staying. Now if you really want to get serious about it, I think you can wrap it around the other direction now and then feed it through the other side just like that. So that is stopping the blood flow from my artery, sorry, from my heart through my artery into my hand. And you leave it on there long enough, your hand will actually turn uh, blue. Yeah, that works very, very effectively. Man, that works really quick. I can feel my hand going uh, tingly.
already from doing that. So pretty neat, man. Uh, this is definitely a great item to have. Um, this is similar to the Israeli tourniquet where you can wrap it around one direction and then you feed it through a little contraption and you can pull it the other direction to get it really, really tight. So that is the Rats Tourniquet. And you can get this from ratstourniquet.com or ratsmedical.com. All right, so last up in the advanced box is the ultimate survival medical guide, all right? So this is to accompany the surgical kit that you have. So this is not, not a field guide. This is not a lightweight book that you can easily throw in your back pocket. This is the ultimate medical guide. And just looking through it, it looks like it has a lot of, um, a lot of advanced things in here that is not normally covered in medical guides. So here it's talking about teeth and rotting. Um, you know, if you watch any of my bug out videos, I say one of the most overlooked individual items is a toothbrush in a bug out bag. People always forget to take care of the oral hygiene, but you, a fucking simple little toothache, man, in a bug out situation, it, that could be fucking pretty dangerous. It's a really high quality book. I love that uh, it has colored pictures and actually has quite a few pictures and images. Here it talks about CPR. So this is this is great. This is uh, talks about a lot of serious medical uh, conditions that are not usually covered in first aid kits. So again, this is this looks like this is for like long term uh, medical readiness. Okay, if you have to have to bug out somewhere, uh, have this at your bug out location already. This is just a little bit too big to be carrying around in your pocket. Um, and this is just kind of a size comparison of the two books, kind of a, a thickness comparison as well. But this looks like a really high quality book. Uh, I love the color pictures and a lot of illustrations in here. So this is great. I'm really happy to have this uh, in my house just, just in case. So that wraps it up for the advanced box. So to recap, we have the Ultimate Survival Medical Book Guide, and then we have the Rats Tourniquet, which is uh, kind of an elastic band, really neat. And then we have this very advanced uh, medical surgical kit. So this is for a really long-term um, medical sustainment. This one's really not. You can stick this in your backpack and bring it along with you. This actually looks like a really great tourniquet. So another thing about tourniquet, guys, just in case you haven't gone through any medical training, is that uh, this shouldn't really be your first item that you go to. If somebody just has a bad cut, don't don't strap a tourniquet on there, right? First. So, unless it's arterial bleeding, you can tell it's arterial bleeding because it'll be bright red, okay, because it's coming directly from your heart and it'll be spurting out, right? Your heart pumps, it'll be kind of spurting out in synchronous with your heart uh, beating. And that's how you know it's arterial bleeding. And if you see that, then yes, you need a tourniquet. But first you wanna try just putting a bandage on there and putting a lot of pressure. If it's still bleeding after that, then you put a, a tourniquet on. Um, and I would say, yes, do it two inches above the wound just to be a nice guy, okay? Just, just so the guy does have to get uh, his hand amputated or his limb amputated. Doesn't have to do the whole thing, but don't take that first bandage off. Do it two inches above the wound. If it's still bleeding after that and still coming out that didn't stop the, wound, the blood, uh, then I would probably put another tourniquet, right? At this point, he's probably lost a lot of blood. I'd probably put another one, me, I would put another one up here. Uh, this is kind of like the guarantee, right? You're guaranteed to stop the, uh, the blood flow if you do it up here. But try a bandage first, uh, and then if you absolutely have to, try the, the tourniquet. All right, so moving on to the Pro Box, the first item we have, and the only item we have is the Leatherman Raptor Medical Shears. All right, so again, this is getting into kind of advanced medical gear here. Um, you know, even if you're in Afghanistan, you know, the average Joe, or the average soldier, soldier or Marine is not necessarily going to carry around medical shears with them, right? This is something that the medic would carry. Uh, it looks like the big benefit is that they fold uh, and they can become very compact like that. So pretty neat. It unfolds. And then you got some shears here for quickly cutting off clothes, uh, cutting bandages. But cutting off clothes is probably the, the first thing that they would use this for. If somebody has a bad wound on their leg, quickly cut the pants open so they can get exposure to it. Looks like it's got a little ruler on the front uh, in centimeters so you can quickly measure out uh, whatever you need to. So pretty neat. Uh, it feels like a very high quality pair of shears here. Um, I like how compact they get. They've got a belt clip here. If uh, I'm gonna keep it there, or you can fold them up, stick them in. Jeez, come on. I 
think you stick them in like that, and then you have another b bigger belt clip here if you want to have this little pouch for them. So you can have them in this plastic uh, case here, or you can pull them out and you have a little belt clip right there. You could probably even strap this onto your Molly gear on your uh, your vest. It's pretty cool. They fold out pretty quickly. Feel very high quality. All right, so if you open it up, it also has one of these tools here. Um, so this is used for tearing open clothes. So if somebody has, let's say, their shirt like this, you could grab this guy, get it in there, and just pull really tight, hard, and you could just tear the clothes going all the way down just to quickly get exposure to the wound so you can start addressing it. So pretty cool. Uh, again, man, a nice little tool to have. This would be a, a great addition to your, your first aid kit. So you get one of these and then you go to a uh, dollar store and build the rest of your first aid kit. So pretty neat, that is the Leatherman Raptor Medical Shears. So these are $70 shears right here. This is kind of some more advanced uh, stuff, but definitely good thing, good thing to have. All right, so last up in the Pro Plus or the Month of the Knife box, we have Fox Knives ALSR FX447 Rescue Knife. So this is a hundred an $11 rescue knife. Yeah, wow, look at this thing. Uh, I, so bright colors, obviously, uh, so, you, so you can easily find it in an emergency. Um, very interesting point here, right? Uh, a lot of knives, they have a kind of a tapered point so you can really poke somebody with it. This is not what that's for, right? This is not for cutting wood, this is not for uh, shaving wood or cutting, you know, things like that. This is a medical readiness knife. This is something that a firefighter or first responder might have on them. Very nice. Um, so you can see down here, it has a blade right there. So again, all right, you can either rip somebody's clothes off very quickly. That's probably what that's designed for, but you might also be able to use this to cut a, a seatbelt very quickly. Stick a seatbelt in there, and you can probably pull that and cut the seatbelt very quickly. And this also has a punch on the bottom here for busting glass. So this is definitely the kind of thing that you would see uh, like a volunteer firefighter having, right? Somebody might buy this themselves. They show up uh, at an incident, the first thing they do is grab their knife, bust open the glass, they get in there, they take this part here and they cut the seatbelt open, get the person out, maybe they have a bad leg wound, so then they use this again to rip the clothes open, right? So, very nice knife. Um, this is a very solid knife. I really like this. A lot of jimping up here. It actually has jimping in two different spots there. Very neat. Very interesting blade, how it's curved like that. And of course, it's got some serrations right there as well. It's got a belt clip here. Uh, it has a little button here for actually locking. It looks like this locks the blade in place. Uh, in order to close the blade, this is, you gotta push this to the side and then close it. Very comfortable in your hands. Um, this is a very serious, serious knife. I like it. So this is the Fox Knives ASLR 2. Okay, it's a $111 knife. Very nice, and it's got a, a little case as well. So you can wear this on your belt, uh, or it has the vertical straps here for attaching it to uh, your Molly gear. So that's it for the February Battle Box. Uh, this is the Emergency Readiness Box. So some really great items in this box, guys, that I'm kind of going to be spreading out all over my life, right? So this knife, I'm definitely keeping this in my car. This is the perfect knife to have in my car. Got another great little first aid kit for keeping in your office, your boat, um, your car, wherever. You got some field guides to stick in your bug out bag or bring along with you camping. You've got some uh, more heavy duty, some more serious medical guides to put up on your bookshelf and have just in case of emergencies. So some really great items here. Um, I really, I'm pretty impressed with this rat's tourniquet. I like this a lot. I'll probably be sticking this in my car as well. So if you guys are interested in your own battle box, go check them out, man. Um, I can't say, I can never say enough good things about this company. Always the highest quality products, right? Um, great items. I'm always discovering new uh, items through BattleBox. Really cool company. Go check them out. And I love that they have different levels, right? You don't have to, you don't have to splurge and get all of this. You just go with the basic box, guys. Their basic box this month was great. It was very well-rounded. You get some knowledge and you get some gear. 
the last thing you need is just the experience, right? Then that's solely dependent on you. They can't give you the experience. You have to uh, practice with this stuff, right? And you have to read this and actually practice this, the skills to get that experience. So great box this month. I'm really impressed with it. If you guys are new to my channel, hit that little red subscribe button down below. I do a lot of videos about prepping and survival. And until next time, guys, remember, knowledge way